Japanese, the, U the European, mostly in Indonesia, in that fortunate place. <coughs> now, they came here for survival. So if you look at the demography in Japan, it looks like an upside down pyramid. And if you look at Indonesian demography, half of Indonesian populations today is under the under 30 years uh, 30 years old of age. So this is this is a very dynamic uh, dynamic uh, country. And if you look at the number in ASEAN, it illustrates the same. So people say it, I, I like to use ASEAN instead of just Indonesia because I believe in ASEAN. And if you look at ASEAN, uh, about 600 million people, almost more than 40 percent of the populations is Indonesians. So you're talking about ASEAN populations, you're talking about Indonesian populations. Almost half of the ASEAN GDP uh, is Indonesian GDP. So if you're talking about ASEAN economic, economy, if you're talking about Indonesian economy. So this is okay. And if you look at the populations of cars, every thousand people, the number is almost equal, almost the same. Same in the Philippines and the same in, in, the, in Vietnam. If you look at the middle class, you know, uh, about 150 million in Indonesia, this is the size of about three times the size of the Philippines. Philippines just shy of 50 million people today. You know, the number in, in Thailand is about 40 million people, so Indonesia is about four times the size of Thailand. And the number in, the, in, in Vietnam and number in Malaysia about 27 to 28 million people. So roughly a fifth of Indonesia. So maybe this region is very dynamic and to meet the world of, uh, demand, this is definitely the place. But then, you know, as we transform, I would like to give this number also for automotive. Today, Indonesia export, and this is this is a mind boggling thing. So if you look at if you go back to 2009, the Indonesian consumer, Indonesian bought, bought about 492,000 of cars in 2009. So I went five years ago as chairman of BKP the end of the investment board. I went from, from Stuttgart to Ingolstadt, from Wolfsburg to Munich. There is all German cup, you know, VW, uh, Audi, Mercedes, uh, BMW. You know, I told them, look, this is, will be the next not not Thailand as the next Detroit of Asia, but definitely Jakarta. But then again, the number is 492,000. I went from Paris to Turin, you know, from from uh, Reunion to to Fiat. No one believed me. The number is 492,000. Today, the number will break 1.3 million this year. You know, be before before the end of uh, the end of 2020, we will hit two million. And before the end of uh, 2025, uh, we will hit 3 million. And I think the, ma the, the number will reach 5 million probably before 2030. So making Indonesia probably one of the most promising for the world. Then the Japanese came. Honda double capacity. Mitsubishi just announced almost double capacity. Uh, Nissan double capacity. Uh, Toyota more than double capacity. Mm. Daihatsu productions in Indonesia by 2016 or the end or, or early 2017 will exceed the number of productions in Japan. So now the our export today for automotive is four and a half billion dollars, making it a top ten. But can you imagine in three years time Indonesia will export automotive as one of the most important top of Indonesian product as an export. Suddenly, from a country that sells raw materials and have finished goods, and suddenly now, we're becoming a very strong hold for automotives. Automotives is a very important investment. 1,200 items, you know, in a car. You know, right now, about 80 to 85% will be made in the country. Soon, when we build engine block here, we will reach 95 after three million, we will build everything in the country. So this is a very high technology. And if you look, you know, of what happened, I'm going to explain what's going to happen in the Indonesian economy uh, after this. But this is a very important product and very high technology, good uh, value, uh, uh, value chain. Uh, and we're going after the value chain. So this is very important. And because of that, we're changing. 
you know, uh, in three years we will become 11 billion, and suddenly what John says, you don't want to be a rule maker. We also want to be a rule maker. Probably the one that we're going to ask, you know, can you imagine if the, uh, the Minister of Trade of Indonesia, uh, maybe in the next three years, will talk to the, uh, the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry in Singapore. Uh, today is Mr. My counterpart is called, uh, his, his name is Mr. Lee Hing Kiang. So I'm going to say to Hing Kiang probably in the next three years, Hing Kiang, I think your COE, this is a title that you have to buy to buy a car in Singapore, I think impeding trade, I think you should revoke that and have Indonesian market, Indonesian traffic exported to Singapore. You know, <laughs> and you can enjoy how the, the commute in Jakarta feels every day. But this is this is the terms that I think we are going to move. But let me say, you know, so if you look at the number of trade uh, in the world by 2012, number says what well, export is about 17.3 trillion. Manufacturer goods about 11.4 trillion. Fuel Mining, this is what Indonesia sells, this is to all the export from Saudi Arabia and everything like that, including coal, about 4.23 trillion. And from agriculture, this is the one that is impeding, I think it's <coughs> you know, making a problem these days, especially you know, from the ambassador experience before he left Geneva uh, by late July, uh, about 1.6 trillion in agriculture. Indonesia, in 2012, or be that this year, we export around 200 billion. 60% of our export is uh, raw material and we have finished products, including agriculture. And we will move toward a more uh, uh, industrialization of the country, like I mentioned. Indonesia right now, you know, if you look at the, my, my numbers at the Ministry of Trade, 731, we experienced about the 731 non-trade measures, you know. And this is a mind boggling of my Rafael Minister of Trade. They said that, you know, commentary minister, we have 202 green box. We have 161 in the amber box and 368 in the red box. I thought, I thought they were talking about political parties, you know, but they suddenly, you know, so many boxes in this case, you know. But then, you know, if you look, you know, and 50 is a, is a defense measure. Dumping and safeguard. You know, we were we were implicated by 68 countries. So, if you think Indonesia sells about half of our export from uh, from fuel in basic commodities, we have about 7, 731 MTMs. Can you imagine when we move into industrialization? So we will see a lot of all these trade measures will be coming. And if you look at the trend, you know, I don't know the numbers, but I feel like this. The, the numbers, the dispute that comes in into the SP is double the number that is set. So it means that you know, we need trade experts. So I don't, uh, you know, this what, what John and everybody else in, in UPH is you are in the right track. And when we do that, when we do that, we have a problem too. We don't have experts in this field. We don't have lawyers in this field. And I think, I think every time we have to go to PSP, the dispute settlement like board, I felt Indonesia is being good. Why? Because you know, every time we have to go, we need to hire lawyers from abroad. Cost at least, at least a million dollars just to have a you know, if we have to go for all elaborations there, it costs about $3 million. $3 million that Indonesia does not have in this budget. I cannot just go to Minister of Finance and say, uh, Minister, I think I need $3 million to, to protect our cigarettes industry because we have a dispute settlement with the U.S. Or we have to go against the clean packaging process in the with of Straits. But as Indonesia grow to be industrialization, this is will be the measure, and this is will be the the trend. I think you know. So we don't want to be we don't want to be trades. You know, people when when I said you know, when the first time I came, I talk about ex import substitutions, attract critics from Washington D.C. to Melbourne, Australia, and it's said you know Indonesia is closing for business. We can't close for business. You know, we were built. We were Indonesian economy is built and designed to be connected 
to the book. And if you look at the at this automotive story, this is what we call the regional integrations. The cars calls Toyota, Daihatsu, Suzuki, Mitsubishi, and Honda. It's Japanese. You know, the investor mainly, mostly, you know, this is Japanese, Japanese dominated. Means you know they own the investment. So it can be it can be foreign brand, it can be Japanese investment. But whose car is that? It's my car. It's Indonesian car. My dossier to the to the to the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs says <coughs> this is Indonesian car. If something happened to this car, this is your business and your responsibility. And this is what we achieve. And this is what we call the regional integration. In integrations. And we, this is for, for sure, it's, it's there and it's in the So we have it. So then, what happened with this booming you know, about this rule taker and rule maker? You know, we will, we will, we will, we will transform. As Indonesia become industrializations from rule taker, we got to influence and to do more goods and business. So I'm going to come back with the import substitutions. You know, I think that one of the institutions goes for business. It's not, it cannot be. You know, and, and um, uh, uh, so I give two examples at Trade Expo Indonesia. You know, I said, look, we eat rice. I don't know how much John eats rice, but apparently he runs every day. You know, no stomach at all. That's all he says. Huh? That's all he said. I want to see you fat, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe next year I, can, I come here, you know, I want to see you gain about 20 or 30 pounds. <laughs> Indonesia, Indonesia has, uh, right now, uh, we produce around 35 million of rice with 130 kilograms per capita. That means we eat more. But the problem is, Indonesia use Indonesia right now, or the, the process of post harvest process of Indonesian rice. It's milling. So if you have, have, have you seen about the process of, of rice milling in Indonesia? They go man, you know, they go like, what's the name in English? But you know, when they said, they know, uh, so they beat this pan, you know, to a uh, to thing so they can have the, the rice coming up, you know, and then they, they dry it in the, well, they dry it first, that they, they are all cooking, and then they beat up this pan, you know, so they dry it in the, you know, in the, in the side of the street, so the truck passed by, you know, that thing blew away, and then they beat it up, and so what happened is what we call the 25% broken rice. So that rice, because it's 25% broken, it's sticky. You know, and Japanese love to eat this sticky rice because this is all they have seen in their life. Not this is the best rice, but this is all they have seen in their life. So the nasi goreng is always nice with this sticky rice. <laughs> but you know, Indonesian is the Indonesian economy too to be a, a middle class uh, first. You know, then suddenly they want to eat better rice. Now about 10% of Indonesian uh, would like to eat a 5% broken rice on them. What's going to happen to consumption? Suddenly, as Minister of Trade, because I regulate the import of rice and sugar sensitive list, you know, I have to find this 10%, 10% out of 35 million, you know, this is about 10 million tons of rice. Have you seen 10 million tons of rice? You know, if this is shipped by 6,000 ton uh, of boat, you know, this is hundreds and thousands of boat we need to transport this rice. So then I said that, look, we have to do further process because this is not our heart. It's not hard at all. So we have to do further process so we can have the process of this false harvest rice to be there. So then when I said this is substitution of import, can I say that? This is obviously will enhance trade, better productions, better, better uh, productivity and efficiency, and you know, the responsibility just not to feed the nations. You know, we have a we have a responsibility to feed the world as well. So I think this is cannot be in trade. Cannot be. So when I said substitution for import, this is cannot be bad for world economy. Second point. We import about a million barrel a day of diesel fuel. I want to change that. 
I want to change this to what I call mandatory 45% of diesel fuel, uh, diesel fuel by biodiesel. Our biodiesel is about seven times better than soy, about seven and a half times better than, than sunflower. So is that bad? Substitution of import. When I say substitution import, you know, the trade expert around the world says, you know, English is for this not. It's not. This is more productive. So, but when we, when we use our biodiesel in the country, what does that mean? We, we pay our subsidy because, you know, we pay a lot of subsidy. We pay our subsidy in the country. You know, we create more jobs in the country because uh, this is efficient energy. And then the most, the most important part is because our producers make more money and they have to pay the Indonesian government of 25%. We call it economics. So this is, has to be great for world trade. Have you been to Japan? Have you seen Japanese foods? Anybody seen Japanese foods? Do you know Japanese mango can cost 50 bucks each? So when going to a Japanese food store is like going to Disney, you know? Have you seen the Japanese grapes, how they sell grapes in Japan? Like five. Grapes. I mean, literally, in, in the U.S., you put it in one plastic, you measure it, you know, you weight it, and they go like a kilo, half a kilo, you pay for it, how, how much? Five bucks. <coughs> in Japan, five things cost about twenty-five dollars. You taste that thing, you know, it feels like, you know, this is they 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 probably take care of these grapes better than we're taking care of our babies. <laughs> that is crazy. So you know, I look. You know, that imported goods also, you know, so this is cheap products, you know, for, for probably the, what we, they call a salary plan. So I saw mango from, but from Pakistan, mango from Japan, uh, mango from the Philippines, mango from Mexico, not mango from Indonesia. And I, 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 I give this speech in, in, a, in a place for Indonesia. But there's no mango from Indonesia. So I said, What's wrong with it? I have a tree, uh, I have a tree culture associate for you. So I said, what's wrong with it? Well, what is that? The, the sugar content in Indonesian mango is so high, so sweet. So when, when, when the sugar content is so high, alcohol, alcohol level is so high, the tree got spoiled from the face, extremely fast. So maybe between what they call it, thick grip, and you know, and basically for, for digestions, Probably in Geneva is about four weeks max. What happened? You cannot ship this mango, you pick it up, you go currently for everything like that to Japan. This thing becomes small. I mean you, you just cannot do it. So then um, uh, you have to go like you, know, you have to go in patients because uh, Thai mangoes in the past have also experienced the same thing. So they, they change, you know, a technological breakthrough and so they can sell it to the world and feed the world. Right? So I said, that, you know, why don't you do that? Yes. This is, you know, PhD, you know, uh, my, my, my agriculture is attaché PhD. We're like this, what for? <coughs> because we ate them all without any breakthrough. You know, we ate them all anyway. You know, you cannot, you cannot find Indonesian mango, let alone in, 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 in abroad. Even outside of Jakarta, you know, everything came to Jakarta, you cannot find Indonesian mango. So then we eat them all. So if you see a lot of, uh, of fruits from China, everything like that, because you know we are the ninth largest producer of fruits in the world, but we eat them all and we import more from abroad. So then I said, you know, we have to we have to change it because problem of world security is just not the responsibility of Indonesia, but also the responsibility of the world to feed the world. And if you look at the study. To feed the, the, at least for ASEAN, the one that can do agriculture is not Thailand. Thailand max out of their of their capacity already. Not Vietnam max out already the capacity. But they only can only two countries can do it in ASEAN: Indonesia and Myanmar and the Burmese that can do it. So this is also part of the responsibility. So if I say you know we have to find a breakthrough for Indonesian fruits and substitute import, do I treat? That do I need to trade? Of course. This is productivity and efficiency. And this is what we will do. So, with this story, I think you know we have to nurture UPH.
you know, and I think I would send, you know, three times for like my ambassador here, you know, fantastic guy, and you know, he's more than happy to go. That, but definitely, we need more trade experts. You know, I, this is what I said, and this is mandated in Indonesian law. Indonesian trade law. You know, people came. You know, the European came concerned about the Indonesian trade laws. Making, they said that you know, if you will be go go uh, nationalist and we're close to the to the to the to the, to the international. It's not. This is the story. Okay, in Indonesian trade. Law. We need to enhance the traders. Why? Because the trade. This is the, the bulk of it. We, we enhance the traders. Why? Because the traders are the one making the network. So producers and industrial, industrialists in the country can sell their products. So if we enhance the, the live and the, the, the being of the traders, we will also enhance the, the producers, be that farmer or industry. Okay? And because of that, it will benefit trade. Trade that beneficial, be that locals or internationals. And only with beneficial trade, we can create a fair trade. And I also believe, you know, because this is about the national, uh, because of the regional economic cooperation, what we call RCEP right now, with the ASEAN and, and uh, uh, partner countries. This is also important to understand that Indonesia, you know, with, with the experience of that, Indonesia can close their market. You know, to keep and to take care of our market is not by protecting but by developing it. In the Indonesian case, we have to build up the industry. And once that begins to become industrializations, we would like to be prosper with the rest of the Asian region. And we will be the champion of ASEAN uh, economic community. And with that, I would like to thank UPH, I would like to thank WTO for supporting us. And I'm asking uh, my ambassador uh, uh, here to help create more trade experts because the responsibility of this big democracy is to create prosperity and world justice for everyone. I thank you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>